I just wanted to um, share a few things. I was with um, the good folks at Inland Revenue um, earlier today. I'm just looking for page down, um, just return I guess. And um, I, I was talking about five things with them and I just want to touch on a couple of the things. First one is um, from a learning design perspective. Um, now we say at Inspire Group, steal like an artist, and we even stole that quote, so there you go. So not a hell of a lot's original. Um, so what do we mean by that from a learning design perspective is there is so much that we can now introduce into learning design. Um, uh, UX, UI, um, human-centered design, systems thinking, using uh, learner personas, um, empathy mapping. So all of those great things that other people do to design things we can also use as learning designers. So still like an artist. The other thing, and, and, and this is something we're seeing more of in, in months, um, you mentioned it too, was learning campaign design versus learning design. So creating a more longitudinal learning experience, we're in the business of designing learning experiences, right? Well, we are. Um, a longitudinal experience to try to shape um, and, and influence human behaviour in some sort of way, using the tools that we have. So using any of the technologies that, that are now available that we can sort of co-opt into our space. Uh, more practice and less content. I shared a, I will share it again. Um, <clears throat> uh, for those of you that know me very well, I'm a, a frustrated rock star musician. I've currently been trying to um, increase my vocal range. I downloaded about three years ago some video content on how to do that. And almost every night after dinner, not all, not all nights after dinner, I go into my son's bedroom and I practice scales, which drives my family up the wall. Now, I have increased my vocal range. I'm not going to sing now, but it's the practice, not the content. <clears throat> if I just watched the video, I would be as bad as what I was. So I'm slightly better, so it's the practice. Um, another thing which I tried to do, and, and uh, use a verb to describe yourselves. So, and this is uh, Stephen Fry. So, um, you know, I was with, uh, actually with uh, another government agent earlier this week. Um, so rather than I'm an instructional designer or even I'm a learning designer, I design learning. Or I design experiences. So using a verb to describe what you do. Um, and then the question then is um, the skills that you'll need. So what are the skills that we will need and the human skills that we need when we work in OD, HR, L&D to influence some of, our, some of our stakeholders? You know, the, the human skills around stakeholder management, um, influencing, selling internally. Um, some, some, some digital skills as well, actually, that kind of came up as well. And the other one too, um, something that Many of our customers are, I wouldn't say grappling with, but are kind of interested into um, moving more towards this, you know, this idea of a learning culture. I was speaking to um, one of my colleagues, Stu, for those folks that, that know him. And he goes, well, it's not a learning culture, Dana, it's just a culture. So yeah, so, so how do we then start to influence culture with the things that we design? So you know, uh, learning culture fosters continuous learning, of course, self-determined learners supported, supported from the top, not for the top. Um, recognises and leverages learning and team-based and collaborative. Um, now, one of the clients we're working with can begin this journey right now. Self-determined learners, design your onboarding program and put the learner in the driver's seat. Because they're brand new and they don't really know how things work around here. So put them in the driver's seat. So on day one, they can start to influence your, your, your culture and influence your learning culture. Okay, so that was just a very um, short missive from me. Um, and, but I think it's important that we bring what we do back into the learning design field because sometimes we see technology and we've got learning culture, the future of work, but then how do we start then incorporating those things in what we design tomorrow? And that's it. So thank you.